Hey y'all, it's Betsy from the Happily Ever After Center, and I am back with another garden tour. So it is June 1st. First of all, my birthday month, but second of all, we are officially in summer. So I have been waiting all through May. I want us to do a mid-May tour for y'all, but we didn't have too much new exciting growth in the garden. In May, we did a lot of work. Um, there's lots of plant with me videos and garden with me videos from May. We actually did a lot of shed projects in May, but there wasn't too much in new flower growth. And then waiting for some of these things to bloom, overnight, all of a sudden, everything starts blooming as it starts heating up. So June, the Angelonia is in full bloom. The gladiolas are finally starting to bloom. My hydrangea full bloom. So we have blooms on so many pretty things. So I'm going to take you around and show you how things are looking with this first flush of blooms. Obviously things will continue to fill in throughout the summer, but looking really pretty. And this is the first year, first time in my life I've ever tried to grow um, gladiolus along with the iris that did really pretty in the spring. But while the iris, um, you know, they'll continue to multiply over the years. So this year I have maybe one iris bloom here and there throughout the season, as opposed to hopefully the next couple years, I'll have more and more and more. With land bulbs, I've planted quite a few of those and they are blooming you know, I have one, two, three, four, five blooming right here, right now. Um, now, I, I planted them all throughout that border of my house, but this spot, as you can see, gets full morning sun, whereas that side of the yard is much shadier. So those bulbs still have quite a few um, buds and will probably have a show down there later in the season. But I succession planted these, so we should have lads throughout the whole season blooming continuously. So we are going to start, as always, around the corner and work our way through the garden. I'm really excited with how it's coming together. Let's go. All right, y'all. So this is not the normal angle we start with. Normally we start over here with the stock tank garden. But if you've watched all the new developments with the shed, the shed is here. It is in actually this afternoon, my brother, mother, and mom's boyfriend are supposed to be over, coming over to help me um, put these railroad ties in underneath the shed a little bit in front of the shed so that they um, act as kind of a foundation to help water from going under and washing out all of the dirt underneath. So nothing super exciting to report about the shed just yet, except it is here. It is beautiful. And hopefully sooner rather than later, we will get to work planting. You can see up on my porch, I've got all kinds of pretty proven winners things <laughs> to go right here. If I can get things in order enough to start planting them. So let's start where we always do with this stock tank garden. It looks great. My um, little watermelon babies, I need even another tie. They are growing up. Hopefully they will start, keep, continue to grow up. Cucumber, of course, is doing good. I probably need to come in here and clip some of these leaves off, but let's see. Yep cucumbers galore i have been getting probably three to five cucumbers off this thing a week but there are plenty more growing so and i just here's the thing with cucumbers if you are not out here almost every day at least when you're growing them up a trellis taking things off where you don't want them and redirecting them where you do want them, they will just, they will cling to anything and everything. So you gotta really be vigilant 
keeping things growing how you want them and not where they want to grow. But that's okay. Strawberry plants are doing good. We had like five severe thunderstorms this week. You can see, um, need to be sprayed with neem oil. But in addition to that, they just, they got quite a few that were rotting on here. I'm guessing from all the water. So lots more flowers now and daddy lang legs. I hate those things, but they're good for the garden. So we will leave them. Ugh. My rose is pretty. It is producing more and more blooms. This one's just about done. And then the coneflowers and the cosmos. When I planted these, I thought they were going to be the short ones, but they are tall. I am not so sure that I like having them. I, will, I thought they were going to be the short ones like I have up front. And so I wanted them to just be a ribbon throughout all these other things. But since they're so tall, they are kind of taking over the whole bed and not letting the cosmos and Gara and other things get quite enough sun. So next year I might move them to be more of a back border with things in front of them. But they're beautiful and they're, I mean, they're growing like weeds. They're just doing really well here. So definitely keeping them. I definitely love them. I just think I might reposition some of these front ones, which is sad because I literally repositioned this one from back there. Now I wish I'd left it, but I did cut back all the Gara. I deadheaded all the Cosmos, um, but uh, deadheading Cosmos is almost again, another daily chore, but they just keep blooming. So, you know, not a bad chore. You did see in a recent video, I transplanted a couple lambs ear. They are looking pretty good over here compared to some of the other ones. Still not convinced that's not pokeweed and needs to come out. But, but even my little baby Angelonia are starting to bloom. Blooms. I'm so excited, but I've got one, two, three, four of them. I don't think they're going to grow together this year like they did last year. So we'll see. Of course, the steely-faced blue angelonia is going to town. It is beautiful. I, it will grow together around this like it did last year, I believe. And then we come to the petunia. These are the super petunia vista bubblegum that I have everywhere this year. They're the main plant I planted and it looks great. I redistributed some of the vincas around it, although I'm still not convinced that this isn't going to take up this whole area. And if it does, I will just pull these vinca. So let's come across the way real quick. Biddy keeps going up here and just sitting in this spot. For some reason, behind the car is like her favorite spot to be in. But our oak leaf hydrangea looking great. I don't think it's going to bloom this year, but next year it should. It's even putting off um, runners already. I do think it is more than established enough. I can take the brick and the umbrella down for good now. Um, these three bubble gum look fabulous. You can see one, two, three of the lambs here we transplanted, which were starting to brown and limp, but now they are back to green and even starting to stand up a little bit. So I think those three are going to make it. And some more of the vinca we transplanted. I will link to all the videos I'm talking about down below so that you can watch all the things that we've uh, done recently, like transplanting the Zvinka and the lamb's ear. The, uh, the salvia, transplanted those in a recent video. They are really starting to bloom finally. And when I say like the salvia and the Vinca, these are things that I had in the garden last year and they reseeded. They've come back. So these were all things that reseeded from last year 
They just didn't recede in places where I wanted them. So I waited till they're big enough and now I've moved them places I do want. Hey, bitty, bitty, bitty. And they're essentially free plants. But the pink salvia up here is finally starting to really flower. You can see all the new babies I just transplanted in to help fill in. But I want this whole area to just be full of lush green and pink salvia. Should be really pretty. Over here last year, they got to three, four feet tall. So chock full of blooms. We transplanted. We didn't transplant. We planted. This is a new plant. This Endless Summer Crush Hydrangea. It is a pink one. My three Scabiosa, my pincushion plants, still just are not blooming. They're big, though. I mean, you can see how much growth they've put on. I don't know what to say about that. This little lamb's ear is doing okay. This one is struggling a little bit. See all that brown? But we'll see. I actually planted two here because one of them had hardly any roots. So we will see if he lives. And if not, I will just divide some more lamb's ear. But I did go ahead and cut back all the... Uh, foxglove that had died over here so that the only the alive foxglove could shine and we planted one two three blue moody veronicas speedwells so those should be really pretty the zinnias are we planted from seed are doing really good and hopefully those will start to flower soon i do have two here and two here so i might take one of each of those and put them here where these two didn't come up. But this one actually has a bud on it. So I'm hoping we are gonna get to see this flower soon. That will be very exciting. And then Petunia, our little hydrangea. It's doing great for mom. I also didn't show you, but one, two, three of the um, tiger lilies, they are looking fabulous, and two of them have buds. More cosmos. And there's the other side of the border. But it's all looking really good. These are tiger lilies as well. So, also... You see that wisteria coming around? A little wisteria bush that we started training up this tree is like grabbed on and is firmly growing up the tree now. So I am hoping, whoop, hoping by next spring when it um, is blooms, it will have grown quite a bit up this tree and be quite beautiful. But I do think we need to come out with another nail and, um, train this one here because I do want it to uh, wrap around but I want it to grow up as well <laughs> and our wisteria stick we planted is I mean it is going to town it's an actual plant y'all like can you even see it with my shadow there you go it's a, it's a real life wisteria stick it's crazy Obviously, it's going to take my little stick several years to get to where the bush is. And that's why we bought the bush after planting the stick. But, and if both of those keep growing, we're going to have quite the show of wisteria on this tree. Especially since this is the smaller blooms and this one is the bigger blooms. Foxglove, foxglove, foxglove. All right. Ready to go down to the star of the show. So right now, this is the prettiest part of the whole garden. We've got the angelonia around our little wind chimes and all of the glads. So we've got one, two purple, a pink, two pink over there, 
one of the dark mob over there. I will put some close-ups at the end of the whole tour, but they are beautiful. Do need to get back here and weed, so don't look too close, but I did have a mob one here. I think I need to spray for B with BT because I found some budworms over here, and I'll put a picture on the screen, but I had a mob one here that was chewed through at the base, but you can see there's there's more buds coming up, so I need to um, I need to spray before the rest of these get taken. And then I didn't stake one of these here because it was looked strong enough, and I came up the next day and it had flopped over and broken off. So definitely need to stake your glads, but just so pretty. The hydrangea. This is another endless summer. Oh, you guys just can't see anything with how harsh my shadow is. It looks so pretty. I think this is my favorite plant right now in my whole garden. I will put I will put pretty shots of all the pretty things at the end. This guy's still growing like a weed. My little um, homestead purple verbena, but still no blooms. Lobelia is blooming. These foxglove, I bought these at the beginning of the summer. They're the first three I had, and I thought they'd be long gone by now, but they just keep re-blooming, so very glad about that. And then the Proven Winners Truffle of Pink Gomfrina, they're coming in nicely. We come over here, and some of the Snapdragons are re-blooming. Plenty of bubble gum, and then this is where I left some vincas. That way, if I need to fill in down here where I put some little tiny vinca starts, I have a place to come grab some. And if not, in a week or two, I will pull those all out. But I do think I want to put once these snapdragons come out, I interplanted all the snapdragons down this way with vinca. That way, as the snapdragons die in the heat of the summer over the next month, the vinca that's starting to go crazy will grow up and bloom in its place. That's that multi-season interest. But I don't really want this bubble gum to be back planted with the snapdragons, um, to be back planted with vinca. I think I'm going to go and buy some salvia of some kind, either the dark pink, um, or blue, even more of just the regular blue here would be pretty there. Now you can see we've got several things to be planted. My window boxes with those bubblegum pink, oh, they're going nuts, just nuts. They're almost overtaking the Stormburst Verbena. But I did clear out in a maintenance video last week, they were growing up my thrillers in the middle like little trellises so I had to cut it back and pull it down and it's it's fine um, my lace cap hydrangea second favorite plant <laughs> I love those hydrangeas you can see some more glads there the purple salvia we moved around is doing great lots of incas this salvia is just like ridiculous and you can see all the blooms like no work with that plant just plant it cut, I cut it back at the very beginning to make it bigger and bushier and you can see it worked the pentas are doing great in there bubblegum here is doing amazing cone flowers looking pretty this is the type of cone flower I thought I was planting over there I'm just glad these are not the super tall ones <laughs> <laughs> Vinca, the lamb's ear. So I planted, divided and planted lamb's ear all along the front of this border earlier this summer and spring. And they looked just as dead as the ones across the way. And I thought they were just going to straight up die. And now they are beautiful little plants. So I still have hope that the ones over there will be fine. We just need to give them some time. We did sneak in some more foxglove over here. One, two, and two down that way. I think I still want maybe two more. 
I'm just trying to plant a bunch of foxglove all in the back border with the gloves and the iris. That way they can reseed and keep growing back there. I want lots of that tall spiky interest, especially in the spring. But I'm also going to winter sow some this year. So hopefully I will have lots more. All right, you can see here, this is where I interplanted all that vinca with the snapdragons. So they will start growing up and being beautiful. This verbena has one bloom. Moms are literally covered in blooms, covered. And mine is like one bloom all summer. I, I don't know. Pretty, pretty foxglove. This was the first glad that bloomed and it is petering out now. It's also facing the wrong direction, but it's hard when, when you have those little glad bulbs, you can't, they're, they're round. You don't know which way is the front and which is the back. I'm not sure why some of them grow facing that way and some this way. I would think they would grow towards the sun, but who knows? And our planted vinca here. The three foxglove I planted that are babies that will bloom next year are getting massive. I also have one of those right there. So this guy will bloom next summer. Foxgloves, of course, are biannuals, so they bloom in their second year unless you buy special ones. Pentas are doing great along with the pink salvia there. It's a little tiny ant. So, mums, I need to keep cutting back one more month and then we can let them bloom. That'll be a pretty color back there because these are a light purpley kind of color. Once this all fills in with pink, it's already pretty, but it will be beautiful once they all bloom together in the middle. <laughs> More vinca interplanted. And then, sorry y'all, camera cut out. So I was saying, these are my Xenia volunteers that I interplanted with these snapdragons. So these guys all came from one plant that I planted out in the garden last year from my porch. After it was done on my porch, I planted it in the garden. It bloomed for quite a while in the garden. And then when it died, it reseeded and I have 10 little zinnia plants and they are already starting to flower. When I replanted them over here, they were really struggling. I literally had to put the stick in as a support, but they're, they're fine. And that was three days ago. So we'll just watch them as they go. Salvia over here is doing great too. Need more blooms on my roses, but you know, they, they all bloom out and then they take a minute to set new buds and then they'll come back. And then, back scub, we have the begonias. So all these begonias we planted are just literally doing amazing. Even the gumfrina we planted back here, that will be a tall interest. Amazing. I do think I'm going to take this one and bring it up here because like I thought this little batch is just not doing great and then I have these three and I'm still not sure if these are weeds or something that receded I left them because I sprinkled some delphinium seeds over here and I was hoping they were delphiniums but I don't think they are and honestly they kind of look like zinnias so I don't know Oh my gosh, look. Caterpillars ate a happy face on this begonia. That's hilarious. He's a happy little begonia now. But we're going to spray BT down here because that's quite a bit of caterpillar da damage as well. They look great though. No caterpillar damage down here. So we're, we're catching it early. But I would like to point out real quick. We planted peony tubers, the Shirley Temples one here. This one was not as great a tuber, so no signs of growth there. But look at this tuber. 
growth. It's a growing peony. I planted a growing peony. I'm so excited. And that's about it. My hydrangea here is starting to bud out. My hibiscus is starting to put on some size and this little window box is looking good. It's never as impressive as the one down there since, I mean, you can tell the difference between full sun and almost full shade. But even in the shade, the plants are doing well. They're just not doing ridiculously well. So I hope you guys liked this tour. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, show your friends, tell your mom. I'm going to go take all the pretty pictures of all the pretty things. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. One last thing before I go, up on the porch, my Cafe Olay Dahlia Tuber has sprouted. We have growth, peony and Dahlia. Ah! Okay, bye for real. I'm just so excited. <laughs>